everybody. It's good to see everyone's names in the chat. Um, I'm very excited to kind of discuss and bring one of my fabulous experts and colleagues uh, along the ride with me today. Uh, so we'll be actually talking quite a bit about what a CRM is and, and sort of what we can see and expect from a platform like HubSpot. But before we dive in, uh, more formal introductions. Some of you may recognize my face from other TechSoup uh, webinars. Some of you may have joined me last month where we discussed persona development. Um, but for those of you who I have not, have never met before, my name is Whit Godden. I am the Director of Strategic Marketing here at TAP. Um, I've been very fortunate enough to spend the last two and a half years working incredibly close with the TechSoup team uh, through the design and management of TechSoup's digital marketing and website services. Um, and we also, along with Janelle, uh, we're also really uh, big contributors to building key educational materials like this webinar today, um, along as well as courses and blog articles. So I'm Wit. I'm going to go ahead and allow Janelle to introduce herself. Thanks, Wit. I'm Janelle Levesque. I'm the Director of Digital Growth here at TAP. I spend a lot of my time strategizing, developing, and implementing various nonprofit solutions across really all the di different digital spheres. That includes web development, marketing, and operations. I also act as our technical strategist for CRM projects, especially through HubSpot. Um, and I do a lot of the automation and management moving forward for our clients. You'll also start to see my name sprinkled across the web on the TechSoup site. I write a lot of their blogs focusing on website and marketing solutions. Awesome. Yeah, she's the brains. I'm more of like the puppet at the front of the show, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of better terms. But thanks, Janelle. I'm, I'm really excited to do this with somebody else for once. And I'm glad that you're able to join me um, and, and, and pass on all of your expertise and knowledge. Um, but before we dive into that, what is TAP? Who is TAP? So a little bit about who we are. We are actually TechSoup's marketing technology partner. Um, and we strive to empower organizations for good. So what does that mean? It really basically means that your vision is our mission. As I mentioned over the last two years, um, I've been sort of spearheading alongside Janelle and some of my other colleagues, our partnership with TechSoup delivering the digital marketing and website services through the TechSoup marketplace. Um, but I think it's also important for to note that for this particular webinar, that here at TAP, uh, we are actually a certified platinum partner with HubSpot. So we have had a lot of experience building and implementing a CRM tool. And we're very, very excited at the opportunity that is coming up and that has been presented today uh, through the partnership between TechSoup and HubSpot. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of dive into what that looks like closer to the end. But for today, um, I really just want to give a special thank you to HubSpot and TechSoup for kind of coming together and recognizing that in order for our nonprofit organizations to really thrive within the digital landscape, accessibility to these different platforms is really, really paramount. So um, we'll get into sort of what that looks like at the end of the webinar today. But before we kind of get into that, um, as you noticed, it is a HubSpot webinar. Um, but before we dive into HubSpot specifically, um, I really want to make sure we're allowing for enough contextualization of what a CRM is and what it does and how it should exist within your marketing strategy. Um, so we'll start off today with kind of a brief highlight of what inbound marketing is. And Aretha should be sharing a link to one of Janelle's blogs that she wrote about how to leverage inbound marketing. It's a, a methodology that Janelle will kind of talk us through. Um, and then what will, well, that also will help that will help us better understand and build a framework to really look at what a CRM is and what it can and what it really should do. Um, and then really focusing on it, how it can increase your organization's communications effort. Um, we will end today's presentation with highlighting four key strategic tactics. Now, these are just four. We don't wanna bombard you. I mean, Janelle and I, as we were preparing for today, I think we both agreed like, we're very passionate about this topic um, on both a solutions end as well as sort of like a strategic and strategist. I'm a digital strategist, she's a technical strategist. So you can only imagine our coffee conversations at the uh, middle of the day. Uh, so we're gonna just leave you with some, some breadcrumbs of what 
four key strategic approaches. So we'll kind of look into collecting your information, segmentation, A-B testing, what is A-B testing, um, and how, how it can differentiate, um, and then marketing automation. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Janelle to talk us through a little bit about what inbound marketing is. Awesome. So like Whit was saying, it's really important to have a better understanding of what this CRM technology is really built on and the methodology that drives all of, all of these tactics. As we look at marketing, there are really two major buckets. One type is known as traditional marketing. You might also hear it referred to as outbound marketing or push marketing. That might be something like a billboard or radio ad, a flyer, a TV commercial. The goal there being to get your message out to as many people as possible in the hopes that the right audience is in there somewhere, we'll see it and then we'll act on it. The obvious challenge here with outbound is that especially for nonprofits, you're competing for the same space, both physically and mentally for your audience with companies who traditionally have much higher budgets to be bidding against you with. Luckily, we have another form of marketing, which is known as inbound, and it looks to essentially take this and flip it on its head. This methodology has been gaining a lot of traction within the B2B and nonprofit sectors because of the way that it really pulls your audience in instead of competing dollar to dollar for the attention of your audience. You might also hear this called content marketing, poll marketing, inbound marketing. And really all this means is what we're looking to do is take your right, the ideal audience and deliver the right message to that right person at that right time. So what does this actually look like? Inbound marketing is really split into four key stages and that seeks to drive a five stage conversion pattern. What inbound marketing looks to accomplish is to first attract strangers to your organization through such tactics like blogging, keyword targeting, and social media. Those methods really help you to turn strangers into visitors on your website. Once you have visitors on your site, what you're looking to do is engage those people into becoming leads. And you can do that through forms, call to actions, and landing pages. The idea here is really to just initiate enough interest to capture that potential supporter, even if they haven't reached their end goal or their in intended activity, so that we can continue to nurture them through our systems and through our pipelines. Once you have them in your system, that's when your CRM really comes into play. You want to work to convert that lead into a supporter with email marketing and automated communication, which is just known as workflows. The main difference in inbound marketing compared to outbound marketing is this next step where the actual relationship building doesn't end with a conversion, but we're looking to delight those supporters into promoters. And we do that with surveys, social marketing, and smart content which is essentially just content that adapts to the person who's interacting with that piece of content. Once a person is a promoter, what they'll do is they'll be so interested in your organization and their mission that they're gonna be bringing in more strangers and visitors to then repeat this process. So essentially this becomes a big cycle or a pinwheel that turns into a well-oiled machine of organic and natural and sustainable support for your organization. And everything you see here can be accomplished within a CRM like HubSpot from all of these stages and all of the tactics that we're gonna be putting into play. Now I'll hand it back to Wit so that we can really define what it's like to leverage a CRM. Awesome, thank you, Janelle. So the question that some of you might be having right now is what is a CRM? So I'm gonna start off with um, a little understanding. Now that we have the understanding from that inbound marketing, um, we're gonna kind of dive into the definition and then kind of explore what those functions are. And then we're gonna see those functions in action. So here it is, a CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management or Manager. It's a tool or a database. Uh, it's a tool for organizations 
to better manage your contacts, automate your data entry, design effective communication strategies, and provide an accurate reporting for teams and stakeholders. So what does this mean? So let's unpack this a little bit, right? So when someone fills out their information on your site, the CRM is where you kind of store all of that information. And then depending on that CRM, whether or not it's a MailChimp or a Salesforce, and then this case, um, and yes, Nicole, we will get the deck to you at the end of the webinar, so don't fret. Um, you know, what, what you're able to do with that information and organize and then make necessary actions against that information is really gonna depend on the platform that you have. So you may know, and traditionally, some of you might be using a, an Excel spreadsheet as your CRM database, and you're kind of leveraging it that way. Um, but really what we're looking at is, is being able to organize them into either lists or tags, and in HubSpot, we call those properties with the necessary data information that allows us to make follow-up decisions on how we want to engage with that person, whether or not that is posting on social media, um, writing content on your blog, building out landing pages. So think of those like buckets or those different tags as maybe donors or maybe donors that are a hundred dollar donor a year. Maybe you have another tag that says that these are the $500 donors. So being able to kind of segment, and we'll get to that kind of that piece there, um, is really the, the main functionality of what a CRM is. And then being able to integrate that information, and, and integration is basically connecting two systems together to be able to make actions based off of that information. So for example, on this diagram here, I have a, a little layout, right? So we have our, our four supporters, our four donors, their donor information, whether or not you're collecting donors on Classy or Give Lively, whatever the platform is, um, a, a platform like HubSpot can integrate into that donation platform and actually bring in those details. How much money, how much, how many donations, what are the value of those donations? Other things could be volunteers, other things could be um, partners. Uh, supporters, sponsors, you can kind of develop a lot of these different workflows, bring all of that information into your CRM, and then being able to either follow up and market through automation, automatic email systems, through conversations on the back end amongst team members. So if, if we're both working on a particular stewardship opportunity with, a, with an individual contact, it's helpful to have that collaboration tool, be able to have that information on the back end and see when did Janelle email that person? And is there something for me to follow up on all of that living within this database? And then I think the most important part and where a lot of nonprofits, I think, have an opportunity is to be able to report against that data effectively, efficiently, and accurately, right? So when we talk about a CRM, you might hear the term, you know, a central source of truth, right? So being able to ensure that you have accurate data that you can also measure and build reports against um, can help you grow your organization through building out um, infographics to showcase your impact and drive donations. It could be a way to show your supporters or your sponsors the efficacy of your efforts. Um, so it's a really, really strong tool for everyone to be considering implementing into their organization. So I'm going to pass it back to Janelle and, and let her kind of talk through some of the key um, sort of functions that a CRM should be able to do for you. Thank you. So first, I just want to address kind of in the chat, uh, Salsa is another kind of CRM definitely targeted at nonprofits. I think from everyone's comments, it's less user friendly. One of the reasons why we love HubSpot is because it doesn't take a developer, it doesn't take an expert marketer to be able to start to utilize it. So we'll look more into what HubSpot can do and its usability, but just kind of keep that in mind that Salsa is definitely not the only uh, solution for a good CRM. Uh, so in terms of a CRM, the um, actual functions and capabilities are going to vary a lot from platform to platform. And even within that platform, depending on the level or the subscription that you have, those functions can really vary. 
However, there are really these five key functions that we wanna make sure a good CRM solution has so that when you're looking to implement one into your organization, you kind of know what functions to look for and that you should be looking to implement. So the core function of a CRM, like what we've been talking about is just contact management. And simply, this is the way that you store, track and manage everyone that comes into contact with your organization. That could be a volunteer, a donor, a company, sponsors, potential supporters, or even the community that you're serving. What this allows you to do is to start to think of your contacts more like a business does, as if they're leads to be nurtured through your pipeline. Even though we aren't traditional businesses, it's important to start to think that way so that we can leverage our communication and our outreach to form longer lasting relationships, which is gonna create that sustainable support for your organization. The third function that we're looking for your CRM to offer is email management. And this should really include all of the phases of of email marketing from designing to writing to sending those emails. This is really important because we're gonna be spending all this time collecting information on your audience and the way that they're interacting with your organization online. And we wanna be able to take that data and then send out emails based on those triggers of their activity or their demographic information. Another cool feature of a CRM would be to actually use it as an internal resource. Keeping all of your information, files, and content in a centralized and cloud-based system allows your organization to stay consistent online. This will really help to streamline your outreach efforts as we increasingly move to a digital and remote environment. You'll also be able to bring in additional stakeholders so that they're able to leverage the same materials that's available to your internal systems. So for example, if you have a board of directors who are going and doing outreach, giving them a certain level of access to your CRM will allow for a comprehensive place where you can have your marketing materials, your collateral meeting notes, and the most up-to-date resources that they can use. And finally, you have the fun part, and this is the stuff that I like to focus on, which is the reporting and analytics. This is where all of your different efforts are coming together so that you can collect, manage, and really disperse data that is clean and consistent through both custom and templated reporting so that you're able to see how your organization is really performing. What this will allow you to do is get kind of a baseline understanding of how your organization is functioning online, and that will allow you to grow over time. You'll be able to start to get a better understanding of where your contacts are coming from, the time it takes to move through your pipeline, how many touches or pieces of communication it takes to make a conversion, what your conversion rates are, how your traffic is growing, and really all the ways that all of these tactics are growing and improving over time. What these reports will allow you to do is really to start to learn how to improve, test out new ideas, and most importantly, figure out which channels and digital tactics your resources are really best spent on. Another cool feature of having a, a nice, clean and robust reporting system is the ability to create easy to access dashboards so that you can report back to key stakeholders, whether that's how you use your funding, the amount of people that you're interacting with or supporting and have that in one comprehensive place. So now I'll hand it back over to WIT so we can look at how this has actually started to make an impact across nonprofits. Thanks, Janelle. Yes, I promise we're going to get into the in-action piece, but before we dive into that, um, just now that you kind of have an understanding of like what a CRM does, I wanted to just highlight a few key metrics out there that I was able to find uh, regarding sort of like the impact that or that CRMs have on organizations that are actually leveraging these types of tools. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of suggestions in the chat. That's awesome. You know, there is no one size fits all for a CRM. So definitely do your homework. Um, uh, and I think there's a lot of great solutions out there. Um, but this is a metrics on overarching sort of CRM utilization. So, you know, 
what we saw, what we were able to find through different surveys online is, um, and reports online is that 74% of organizations have said, have stated that the CRM technology gives better access to customer data. I think this goes very well into what Janelle just explained is, being able to develop and build out those reporting tools, whether or not it's what you need to do for an, from an outreach perspective or a way to report um, for an, from internal conversations, whether or not that's to stakeholders or to your, your board of directors, whatnot. So you can really show the actual clean data and impact um, and being able to have everything centralized rather than I've, I've had some clients where they're managing things from their inbox to a, you know, an Excel sheet to uh, a CSV file with all their donors and they're trying to kind of put them all together and the opportunity for human error is, is much higher, right? But rather than being able to just kind of go in and click one button and then all of a sudden you have a beautiful report and you know that it's clean and it's easier to access um, and anyone can access it. It's not in my inbox, it's not on my computer, it's built and it's saved in the actual CRM. So anyone with access can actually get there. 92% um, of organizations believe that a CRM is crucial to delivering more meaningful relationships. Uh, you know, this goes back to really understanding who your donors are and how, or sorry, who your contacts are and how they're engaging, right? And then making the appropriate decisions when it comes to communications through email marketing, social media marketing, landing page development, all of that stuff. And we'll get to, uh, when you get to this uh, in action piece, there's a really great tool that is available on HubSpot that can really deepen your knowledge of your contacts so that you can build much richer and more meaningful relationships as you continue to engage with them across the platform and across your, your efforts. Um, and then there was a 27% increase in customer retention for organizations using a CRM. So a lot of nonprofits we talk to and work with are like, how do I get my one-time donors to become a repeat donor or an ongoing donor, right? That's a strategic content, strategic marketing, strategic decision and plan that needs to be built out. But you have to have one, the information and then two, the tools to actually execute that strategy. So by having a tool like a CRM with an integrated marketing uh, hub or marketing platform or marketing tools, you're more likely to capture and retain that individual donor to continue to come back to your site, find rewarding, um, rewarding elements of what your organization does. And then hopefully the goal would be to either make another donation or become a repeat donor or supporter of your organization. So now we've come to the point, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I jumped, jumped ahead of myself. One, one last piece here is I wanna kind of go through um, I'm going to pull my experience working for one of my favorite old jobs in the back, uh, back in the day is really understanding the features versus the benefits. So as we talk through these actions, these um, showing you some like use examples of how to like leverage these different tools, knowing what the feature is, and then how does that actually benefit an organization? So you heard Janelle may reference it a little bit. We'll kind of show it again. A workflow automation. So a workflow automation is essentially the ability to set a, a set of steps or triggers to happen on the back end. So when a donor signs up for this or makes a donation, is there an automatic workflow that says they donated this? Have they already donated X? Okay, let's bump them up to you know, our platinum donor. And then you have a, a section of, in your CRM where you can see everyone who's donated in lifetime or for that year, $500 or more. This really allows for you guys to build on uh, nonprofit organizations to build capacity because you're not having to do that manually. It's all getting done through a workflow. Um, and it also allows to maintain consistency. There's no, there's a lot less likelihood of human error um, or a miss trigger or a miss send because you have a computer, the AI kind of doing that for you. Um, I'll also show an example of a workflow automation as it relates to email marketing, which I think is a great opportunity for nonprofits to start leveraging. Customization. Uh, if your CRM is sort of is what it is, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit challenging. So you want to be able to allow, you want to have a CRM like HubSpot uh, that you can customize and really make it work for your organization. What are those, what are those tags, tagging systems? How do we manage our lists? 
you know, being able to, how do, how do we build the reports that are actually important for us? You're not kind of pigeonholed into a turnkey solution. You have the ability to really customize uh, those features to make it work for your organization. Integrations, I touched on in this um, at the beginning, how does one system connect to another? Those systems are so crucial to ensuring that you have real time and accurate data. So being able to connect into your donor platforms or other platforms that you might be using for reporting tools, or I am working with a nonprofit right now that does wholesale for farms. So connecting to their ERP and being able to bring in all those order informations and then track all of that information within the CRM database. Integrations are such a crucial and important piece so that you're making sure that all of your data sources are connected and they're staying accurate and they're updated in real time. Customer service, definitely an important feature of any CRM. I'm sure we've all experienced it with multitude of different software solutions out there. Something's not working right or you don't know how to get something to work right. You know, it's important that whatever solution you choose has a strong customer service so that you can better understand and use the systems to its most, uh, the best of its capabilities. Um, Social media management and monitoring. This is another really important component as you're looking to uh, manage your CRM data and CRM contacts. Being able to measure and, and understand how did this one social media post actually make an effect on this final number, whether or not it was your donation or your volunteer acquisition or, or maybe a program participation, um, if you're trying to kind of run that. So you can having that leverage point of being able to tie it into your social media management and of course monitoring the ability to respond and engage with the people who are actually interacting with your content is really really important meeting scheduling this is uh, there are so many different solutions out there but it's very helpful if it's built into the context that you might be working with right especially if you want to keep a track of how many times have we met with this person where are the notes from those conversations? Um, and then in, in some cases, a live chat feature is a really, really great resource to have. So if I'm going to your website and I need to find a resource, I can type it into either a live chat or an AI bot, and that can support your visitors finding what they need um, or who they need when they're visiting your site. So now that we've kind of really unwrapped all of this stuff about inbound marketing, CRMs, what it does, what are the important features, uh, we're gonna dive into really showcasing these some of these features in action. So I'm gonna kick it back to Janelle uh, and she's gonna talk us through the first two. Awesome, all right. So first, I just want to touch on the examples that we're using here are HubSpot specific. I see a lot of people in the chat talking about CRM options, and there's definitely a lot out there in the ecosystem. The reason why we love HubSpot and really work with them um, is because if we look at the different CRM options, HubSpot falls in that place where power meets ease of use. So as we walk through these, we'll get to see exactly how it looks on the HubSpot, but the tactics and the methodology behind it can be applied to the different CRM systems that we're all discussing here. So we keep talking a lot about all these contacts in our systems, but what's really important to understand is how they're getting in there. And one of the most important ways is forms. So forms, if we think back to that inbound methodology slide. It's a way that we're converting visitors on our site to leads. Forms are kind of like a transaction where you want to trade off information that you're asking of the visitor for value that you're giving to them. And you want that trade off to be a very even match. So for example, if you're asking someone to sign up for a newsletter, that's a pretty low value ask. Newsletters are pretty easy to come by. There's no one-on-one -on -one communication needed and it's easy for your organization to deliver on that promise, right? Asking anything more than their name and email might turn them off and not have them subscribe because you don't have that relationship built yet to ask them for more information. As you build out these forms in the form fields, it's important to always remember, is it more important for me to have this information or for this visitor to see what this value is? 
your newsletter is a great way to build relationship over time because you're using it to show the good work that you're doing in, a, in the community, the events that you have, the impacts you're making. And that's more important than having a full-fledged contact record of everything that we need to know about this person eventually. A more comprehensive form would be something like a contact us form, right? That person is asking for a bigger value. They're requesting a one-on-one -on -one communication and that allows you to ask for more form fields. Maybe you're asking for more in-depth information about how to contact them, the role that they play within your organization and the reason for reaching out to you. Um, we can skip to the uh, progressive form fields. So one of the reasons we also love HubSpot is because for every feature that you have on HubSpot, you're able to grow as your organization grows and increase the complexity and the target target and the way we target uh, information in the system. So if we start off with basic forms, over time, what we wanna do is make those more complex so that the data that we're collecting is more clean and efficient. Progressive fields allows you to make your form smarter and more efficient across your website. With standard form fields, the way those work is the same fields will show on that form regardless of who is looking at that form or who's interacting with that piece of content. But if you have progressive form fields and that person comes and fills out a form for the second or third time, we don't have to keep asking them the same contact information. And that allows us to build out more information about that person over time to get a better sense of who that person is all around. Another way we can do that is to actually have those progressive form fields change on the, on the form itself. So for example, if you are an educational based community organization um, and you're looking for volunteers to sign up, but your volunteers need a master's degree, maybe it makes sense to ask them yes or no if they have a master's degree and then trigger more form fields to show up live because you know that they're a valid lead for a volunteer and then you can build out that application. All right, so the next piece we're gonna look at is segmentation. So the information that you're collecting on these forms are brought into your CRM as properties. Properties are essentially just pieces of information or data that you can collect about a contact or company. And this allows you to learn more about your audiences over time and the demographic information that's similar or patterned throughout. This data also allows for more personalization over time. A cool uh, feature of HubSpot is personalization tokens, which allows you to insert pieces of information that you know about a person into your marketing communications. This allows you to create mass marketing and mass communication without losing that personalization piece or the feeling like you're having a one-on-one -on -one communication. So for example, if you look to send a follow-up email to sponsors, to everyone who gave a sponsorship for a fundraiser that you just had, you can write one email one time and then use that forever. And what that would look like would be inserting these personalization tokens into that email. So hi, first name, thank you and the team at organization name for sponsoring event name. And that all happens in a massive way so that you're able to cut down on that administrative burden that it takes to follow up with everyone without losing the relationship building piece. Another key piece of what segmentation allows you to do is um, actually build out lists of contacts based on either behavior or information like demographic information. These lists is what helps you power targeted emails and personalize your website content, depending on the audience that's viewing it. And this is what ultimately powers your marketing automation. Lists can also help you keep track of who's in your system and keep your data really clean. So you're able to see who is a volunteer, who's a donor, who's a board member and have a quick list to reference moving forward. 
You can also cross-reference the data that you have to determine the contacts in your system who are not current stakeholders, but you believe can be more easily nurtured into a conversion. So what does that actually look like? Let's take a donor, for example. Say you have a list of donors who've contributed $500 and more in the last year. We, what we can do is analyze all of the properties that we have for those people and look at patterns and then start to make assumptions for who else we can target based on that information. If your donor base starts to share or have patterns on demographic information, maybe their job title, their industry, or how they've interacted with your organization, such as attended a gala, what we can do is we can cross-reference with other stakeholders in your system who have not donated and then send targeted information to help that conversion happen. And for anyone who's a little advanced out there, the next step in that process would be to take that information and apply it to advertising. Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, LinkedIn ads, once you have a clear idea of what those properties are and what the demographic information is of the people you should be targeting, that will make you able to build out these ads without spending a lot of, a lot of dollars to reach large people or large audience audiences by knowing exactly the types of people who are more likely to convert. Awesome. Thank you, Janelle. So the other two kind of in action moments or I'm gonna discuss on. Uh, the first one is A-B testing. Now, if any of you guys have been on any of my other marketing web webinars, you may already have heard this term or if you have marketing background, you may uh, know what that is. But for those of you who may not have ever heard of the term A-B testing, um, it's, it's also known as split testing, but it essentially allows you to compare two versions of something to learn which is more effective. And I think um, one of the number one opportunities in organizations that I see is, is something very simple. It's A-B testing your email subject lines, right? So, you know, I, I'm kind of looking at this from a better, best type of scenario. So the better version, which you can pretty much do on any email marketing platform out there, is essentially kind of split your list in two and try sending an email with a subject line one and then splitting your list on the other half and sending an, e an email with a subject line two. These are having, you have to kind of manually create these situations, send those emails off separately, and then essentially go look at the report at the end of it and see which one performed better. So when we're talking about subject lines, we really, that's gonna help us influence the open rate, right? If something's in my inbox, how is that subject line incentivizing your recipients to actually open that email. So in order to track and understand which subject line worked better, we would be looking at, as I have outlined in these red boxes, the open rate. So the open rate is the percentage of people that actually opened the email versus the, the total entire send pool that you have. So in this scenario, if we have subject line A had an open rate of 38.8%, and subject line B had an open rate of 45.6%, we can, from a statistic and a data perspective, say subject line B worked better. Now, what if there was a solution that allowed and helped and supported doing this automatically? Well, that's amazing. And there is a solution out there and it is on HubSpot. And I will show you an example of that. So inside of HubSpot, when you go to make a new email, just as if you would on any other email, mass email marketing um, option is in the upper left-hand corner, you have this little create A-B test. So what that does is it allows you to actually in the one single email that you're, that you're sending is to assign one subject line A, one subject line B. And then as it sends out that information, it's actually automatically reporting back to itself which is performing better, and then we'll switch to the higher performing subject line so that you didn't waste one of those halves of customers or quarter maybe in this, in this example, um, getting a, a subject line that may not have been as viable. So as you can see here, we've got you know 25%, 25% going to A and B. And as that information comes through, the remaining 50% of those emails are gonna be sent to the winning version. And this happens 
automatically. And then you can see here, if we go into the A-B test results, we can actually see version A, version B in this particular email campaign, which one actually performed better and where it fell back on there. Um, let me go to the next slide. Uh, the last piece that we're going to talk about is marketing automation. And this is where I was talking about workflows. So um, briefly, like a marketing automation is you telling the AI, the computer system, the software, when something happens, do this, or when a person does this, respond with this. And that happens on an automatic setting and it's predefined by the user on the back end. And I'll be honest, it's, it's pretty amazing what you can do. And some of you might already have been doing this when in this example, which is a single email automation, which is when someone signs up for my newsletter, send them a thank you email, welcoming them to our organization. So this would be considered a single email automation that just goes out once. Um, and this is, you can do this on pretty much any and all um, email platforms. But when we move into more of a workflow dynamic and workflows in this example are, we're looking at email marketing is how do we want to follow up with a second, potentially a third, or even a fourth email, depending on the recipient's behavior. So I, I, I can also share with Aretha to send out, I have a diagram of sort of like what a workflow would look like uh, in relationship to a donation workflow. So the initial step, someone made a donation, we say, thank you, maybe with a request to increase their donation or, or not. And then if they if we might send an automatic email two weeks later, thanking them again, sharing with them what their donation was able to do for your organization. Thank you for your $25. With that $25, we were able to deliver food to the unhoused communities in San Diego. Um, if you'd like to continue your support, we ask that you make another donation or become an ongoing person, an ongoing donor. If they make that donation, they would split off and they could say, thank you for becoming an online donor. And then a subsequent um, preset determined list of emails that would go out uh, over a period of time. On the other side, if they don't make that donation, you might decide, can we make another ask? You know, if anyone on this call is from the stewarding on their, your organization's stewardship committee or on the board or working within that space, it all comes down to just making the ask. And a lot of times we leave that up to scheduling a meeting, sending an automatic email, I mean, a, a manual email, but by utilizing platforms and, and tools and technology like workflow automations, a lot of that lift is taken off of your shoulders from an organizational and overhead perspective. And you're able to do the other things a lot more efficiently. And as well as the rest of the features here, the reporting capabilities around these are also incredibly robust. So you can continue to look at how are these pieces working and how can we continue to optimize those workflow automations rather than just trying to remember to send the follow-up email in the first place. So in conclusion, you know, I think the, the big, big, big picture here is any CRM that you have, and I've seen a lot of great conversations happening in the chat here, is ensuring that whatever database you have, it's clean data, and it's connected through an integration point to allow for automation growth, um, and that you can optimize those operations internally. Um, so as we continue to have conversations with one another, with our colleagues, with our board, and you look at maybe investing in a CRM system, leveraging that integration point is going to be incredibly critical because it allows and supports for all three of these core components of really making an actionable and effect effective use of your CRM through your communication strategy. I'm gonna leave with a little bit of a, 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 another pat on the back to HubSpot specifically um, and TechSoup through their partnership, but this, if you, you wanna talk about like, we were, I saw a lot of conversations of it, does it connect to this? Does it connect to that? Or does this platform connect to this? This is, I would say, a the HubSpot's app ecosystem where it is now. These are always updating and always changing. So it's an incredible resource of opportunities to leverage all of that data you guys have internally in your CRM system and be able to do lots of different things like lead generation, automation, social media, um, sales, any and all of the above. So 
I know that Aretha sent out the link before, but definitely take a look and start to explore what the solutions look like. You know, I, I don't want this to be too heavy of a sales conversation. It really is about tactics and letting and helping you guys find the solutions and using those solutions to, at the end of the day, increase your impact and grow capacity within your organization uh, and doing that with data-driven decisions and the ability to return back to those stakeholders and say, what we're doing is working and here are the numbers and here's the information to kind of show that that's the case. And then lastly, of course, as always, you know, if you have any questions about what we went over today, you can get in touch with us through this email here. Um, we are excited to be partnering with TechSoup as well to help support nonprofits who are looking to take advantage of this new partnership with HubSpot uh, through the HubSpot for nonprofits. So feel free to uh, click the link in this, and then um, we will definitely love to speak with anybody who has further questions on what HubSpot can do for you guys and any and all other marketing or website questions you might have. With that, I think Aretha just let us know that there are a few questions in the Q&A. So I'll invite Janelle back. Thank you, Jen. I hope that this was helpful. We'll, we'll kind of get through all of the, the Q&A and any final, final answers, and then we'll let you all get back to your day of changing the world and making it a better place. Aretha, do you want me to answer? Uh, yeah, um, um, I, I do want to answer this question from Anne Marie and a couple of other people about the chat room. I, um, I'm sorry you're not able to copy and paste. I don't know why that's not happening, um, but I would definitely keep trying or screenshot something that you want to share. But as far as TechSoup sending out all the chat, we have to get permission from everybody to share their information or share because we use a platform called SlideShare and SlideShare is open source. So that means anybody in the world can go on SlideShare and type in something and pull up this whole chat. And so Wit could sue me and say, I didn't give you permission to say I was there that day. I, I did something wrong that day. So, yeah. Marisa, so I'll I, give you anything, but I totally respect other people's privacy. That totally makes sense. But I trust you with my information. All right, so go ahead. Um, Janelle, why don't you read the Q&A? Do you see Q&A? I do, let me see. Um, so the first question that came through is, what advantage does the cost version of HubSpot have over the free version? So this is a great question. The way HubSpot in particular is set up is like we said, at its core, it's a CRM. And then from there, it's developed out hubs that you can add on to that CRM functionality. So there's a marketing hub, a sales hub, a service hub, an operations hub. So there's a lot of room to grow within the platform. So when we look at that, it's really a wide range when we look at the cost version versus the free version. The free version is a really good place to start just formatting and starting to collect that data. But really what you want to do is look into what hub best suits the need for your organization and how can you grow into into having that hub as a part of your operations. Most often we look at the marketing hub as being a really great solution for nonprofits. And a lot of the features and functionalities that we talked about today are included in that marketing hub piece. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. You know, and to your point, Janelle, like it's really about making sure when you're going into that any paid version of it, that it's the right one for your organization. I've been working with a nonprofit recently that I think I mentioned them earlier. They are a kind of a, a solution for selling wholesale um, and connecting farmers to marketplaces. Um, so they're looking at, okay, do we leverage the sales hub for that so that they can help kind of manage their internal sales database? And as they're working through these different um, relationships with different wholesalers, they're able to track those from an operational perspective internally versus to Janelle's point, you know, a marketing hub where it's really leveraging a lot of the tactics and tools that we just highlighted like A-B testing. And I did see someone ask if A-B testing is available on the free version. It's not, it's gonna be something that comes within the marketing hub, uh, the marketing professional hub in there. Um, but again, like there's lots of solutions and lots of ways to kind of tiptoe and get your toes uh, wet and um, kind of jump into to the different options there. Um, I would love, you know, I think that, kind, I hope that Anne Marie, that kind of answers a little bit to your question about HubSpot has a free marketing sales hub service and operations. Um, how can you guys as a start, as a nonprofit that is starting up utilization, utilize that 
opportunity. Janelle, do you want to touch on a little bit about like what's available maybe in like the not in the marketing starter package and how that might compare? Or is that worth the conversation today? Yeah. So the there are a lot of core marketing functionalities available in that free section. So as you're starting off, if you're a brand new organization and you're really just looking to start to build out these processes, it does make sense to start on that free account. What you'll be able to see once you're in HubSpot is all of the different features, they're still in your platform. There's no question as to what it's capable of doing, but you will see a little lock mark, which will signal which which piece you need to upgrade to for that core functionality to be added on. So a major difference between the free to the starter version for the marketing hub would be the ability to take some of the HubSpot branding off of the forms that you're able to add to your website. There's a little bit more um, customization that comes with the properties that you're building, uh, more robust emailing functionality. So all those different features, there's kind of like what was saying a good, better, best. And that really just depends on what level you have across the hubs. Nice. Um, I'll answer Spafford's, which is, are there features of HubSpot that are tailored specifically to the needs of nonprofits? I think that's a great question. Um, it goes back a little bit to what we were, uh, what I kind of discussed about the customization and the ability and the capabilities of customizing the different features and functions within HubSpot. So the benefit is of that is like you, no nonprofit, many nonprofits may not function the exact, exactly the same way. So the ability to go in and define these different properties, the way that you segment your lists and then what you do by your workflow automations, um, you can really customize it for your nonprofit's needs. The second piece that I think is really important to touch on is its capability to sort of integrate into the systems that you might be using, like your donor platforms and things like that. Uh, integrating across those different, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, that that uh, wholesaler connecting it to their ERP is really vital so that we can continue to maintain and manage their centralized CRM data and database to match all of these different data input um, uh, places. Um, I want to just quickly touch on anonymous attendee. Janelle, is that all right if I answer the Salesforce question? Yeah, I actually just found a great link as well. So I'm going to drop that in the chat while you're, while you're talking beautiful. about it. Yeah, so Salesforce is a beautiful platform. It's a great sort of CRM and they have a wonderful uh, nonprofit uh, discount free version for that. And that, that's amazing. And I think it's a great solution for a CRM. Um, the, I think where the, the opportunities lie sometimes is the Salesforce itself does not have a built out of the box necessarily out of the box hubs like these hubs that we're talking about within HubSpot um, to connect and do things with that information. Um, a lot of times getting the information out can be a little bit challenging and cumbersome and requires a level of technical um, expertise to be able to ensure that you're getting data in and getting data out effectively. Yeah. Janelle, do you want to take the file and content management capabilities? Yeah, let's see. So can we talk more about the file and content management sharing capability of HubSpot? Thinking specifically about storing impact stories, marketing collateral, et cetera. So if you're familiar with something like Google Drive or Dropbox, it functions very similarly. It's cloud-based um, system where you're able to create folders and different level of access across your team so that you can have up-to-date information of files that you can store in the system. Um, oh, did it? In terms of impact stories, I'm assuming that that might be a video um, there's multiple ways to integrate video in HubSpot, both in your emails and your landing pages. They do have direct integrations with video platforms, so you're able to see even uh, the viewership in those videos over time, where people are dropping off, what that engagement actually looks like, and also have them live on an external source like YouTube and embed links that so you're able to see click-through rates and that sort of thing. Um, Are you familiar with Keep? I'm not. Infusionsoft? I'm not familiar with that platform either. So uh, Christy, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to expand on the comparison um, with that. So I apologize. Okay. 
Uh, what features are unique to Sales Hub that are not available in Marketing Hub? Let's see. So um, Sales Hub is more targeted at that one-on-one -on -one relationship building. That's That would be better suited for organizations who have large funders or large donors where it's a one-to-one -one relationship that you're nurturing over time. Uh, the marketing hub is more focused on the automated mass communication, the kind of the top to middle of funnel approach. Um, I feel like the marketing hub works really well with nonprofits because a lot of the features that you have in there, including like the email templates and the snippets and that sort of thing, that can be used in the sales process as well. So I really think, that, and, and what you can let me know your opinion on this, but unless you're really focusing on donors or larger funders, Marketing Hub, if you're going to pick between the two, is probably the better solution. Yeah, that's a great, great suggestion. And I, I, I have worked with nonprofits. I've been on the board of nonprofits where we do, we have these very high dollar opportunities within, you know, and I, that's where it may even be a conversation to have with like your development director or your stewardship committee on your board and getting an understanding of like, how is it with managing these, you know, six, seven, eight figure po prospects, right? We call them prospects. Um, and how are you tracking and managing and collaborating on those uh, particular individuals um, over time? I'll give an example of an organization I'm on the board of. Uh, we had a, a individual who had inter, inter, engaged with our organization many, many, many years ago. And our stewardship committee just fortunately was very good at staying in touch with them. And they actually, um, upon like when they when they passed away, they they um, donated a over ten million dollar sort of grant or uh, donation to the organization, and it was really just because of that continued conversation piece, right? So I think that's a great example, great a great um, way to kind of differentiate the two. Uh, there's actually another question in the chat that I'd like to call out. Um, that we already have a CRM and converting to another one is such a daunting project. Uh, having to contact all existing donors to change or renew their donation on the new platform. Any solutions to make this easier? So actually with HubSpot, we can integrate with whatever that current donation platform is so that that process is not being interrupted. Uh, we also offer implementation and migration services so that you won't have to go you know, on that journey alone. I guess that's time. <laughs> but yes, I think that just quickly to touch on that, you know, I think it's always important when you're starting with something new or you're migrating over, this is a great opportunity to make sure you have the system set up correctly. So definitely, you know, take the time to make sure that as you move over or as you start something new, you're really doing it the best way you can from the out gate. It's much easier to build something correctly than to fix something that's a mess um, after it's already been built. So that's just my little two cents there. And on that note, I guess, Aretha, are we finishing up here? Yes, thank you all for coming. Make sure you fill out the survey. Thank you.